Match point for G2. I don't know why I tried to do the Halo song, but it felt very fitting for the occasion. G2 is for Star Wars and Caliban. Let's not wait any longer. It is time. I'm still sick. This, these games help me forget. That's cool. My lovely girlfriend gave me tea and soup. So I feel better. Now I am energized. G2, go for the Renekton ban on blue. Renekton, three games of Khan, Renekton. Let's see now. Pantheon ban, Kiana is the next. Or are they gonna put the gun to G2's head? Ooh, Rise ban. Rise ban. You don't wanna play against Rise with. Oh! Mata is playing. Okay, okay, Mata. <laughs> Holy shit, what a storyline if Mata comes in and fucking sweeps G2. That would be crazy, man. That is that is nuts. Big Mata fan. His trash game was was tragic, but he's coming in now. He's coming in now. The general the general will SKT clean up their decision making? Will they be more active? Will Clid become dandy? This is fun. This is fun. G2 coming into this draft, they're like, we're going to ban Leona, and they're like, boom, Mata's here. Holy shit, Mata plays more than just one champion. Let's see Mata's form now. Mata took them to five games last time. He's gonna take them to five games this time too, maybe. Zaya's open, Rises banned, Kaiser's banned. Ooh. They are forcing a Zaya Kiana trade. SK Telecom, if they ban Zaya here, I think the first pick, uh, Kiana, will go into mid lane. And G2 can be happy about it. Okay. First pick Kiana. Ooh. Syndra's not banned. They're just showing it. Oh, Gragunia. <laughs> okay. Kiana is open, guys. Kiana's open. Tian Kiana was oof. For another galaxy. Kiana's open, Ezreal's open. This is a game where, uh, you know, probably you want to pick AD later because Ezreal can be countered by Yasuo bottom. Enemy is showing Gragas already. Gragas is pretty high prior when both Zaya and Kaiser's are because Yasuo is a very good option here. Yasuo is very, very good into uh, bottom. Uh, a lot of the bottom lane champions, including Varus. But it also depends a lot on your Subo matchup. Let's see if SK Telecom, for example, play a Shen. That could be good against Yasuo. This honestly looks like a Yasuo lock-in. I think the Yasuo matchup into Kiana is also pretty good for, for Yasuo. Boom. That is the trade they were looking for. Picking Gragas to make sure that they can pick Yasuo, flex it, and then consider putting it into Varus. Perks. Looking like he has some genius going on in his mind. Oh, the double flex. Honestly, like this, they can counter support on fourth, and then depending on what is better, they're going to go for the one. I like this. Because here they have the option. Oh, Tam Coco. Tam Coco in the bot lane. It will be fucking hilarious if Mata comes on stage, plays a game of Tam Coco, and then he retires. Nautilus gets locked in, which is uh, okay against Yasuo and, uh, and Syndra. Probably the best option. I think picking Tam would be pretty troll. G2 should ban AP jungle options. Unless they need more bans to secure bottom matchup. Thresh Yasuo is pretty nasty to deal with, but here Elise ban probably. 
At least Ben is the one. Okay. Is G2 just going for the same bands, Jax Fiora, and they're looking to be Kled and Camille, and they are happy with it? This time around, G2 banned Renekton first three, so we're going to have a change of matchup on top. So against Camille, possibly you can pick GP, but here it works a little bit better for G2, because uh, SKT is pretty AD heavy already. So they, if, they, if they have GP with this composition, the composition doesn't look that good. Here with the Fiora ban, lines them up for Kled. Maybe they pick Camille again. Could be the case. Here it is much better than the previous game. Renekton is out and also uh, AD options. Don't want to go for AD options here. Leblanc ban. Okay. Leblanc ban is a bit weirder because you have Syndra Yasuo flex. I think Syndra ban, I mean Leblanc ban means that you want to put Syndra into bottom and Yasuo into mid. It's almost uh, declared. I do think Yasuo is better against Kiana mid than, it, than, than Syndra. I think the reason they didn't choose, they chose to not ban junglers is because Kiana can still go jungle, but Clid didn't play it yet, so I had the assumption that Kiana is going to go mid, and my assumption was correct. Oh! Okay. I dig this. How the fuck do you play Varus this game? This Varus will get so fucked on so many levels. This Varus is doomed. This Varus is doomed. How do you play Varus this game? Tell me how do you play Varus. It's impossible. It's impossible to play Varus. How do you play AD carry this game? Orn, Olaf, Syndra, Yasuo, Kragas. <laughs> wow. Well, Syndra can still go mid. This could be Yasuo Gragas bottom, or you just go Syndra Gragas bottom and Yasuo mid. That works too. Uh, for the damage mix, Olaf is probably better. Vladimir uh, would be my prediction as well uh, to pick into this. It's uh, the only pick that can survive any of these monster monster combos. You should consider if Vladimir was a better band than Leblanc if you want to pick Orn, because it's not like Jax is good at all here. Vlad is 100% the best pick. You can deny combos. You can Klepto on Orn. Honestly, G2, G2's draft is fucking beautiful. Fucking beautiful. Very hard to play Kiana Varus against this team. Super, super hard. So many beefcakes. Against Kiana, you want to pick beefcakes. Mata, mata, mata. This is... I'm in this draft, this is not the draft I want to be in if I'm playing, if I'm subbing in here. Effort getting benched. Let's go Mata. Last year at Worlds, Mata took... Um, KT to five games against IG with uh, Deft and Mata considered to be one of the best ball lanes in the world. Mata on SKT has fallen from grace. They need to bring in effort to sub in. But after a game like that, they are cutting effort from the equation. Mata with his decision making and leadership. Might be the change that SKT need, but I think draft is so fucking won. Unbelievable how won this draft is. Who, went, who goes where? Okay, Perks on Yasuo, Yasuo Gragas, Bottom, Syndra mid. Okay. So here, SKT have a lot of windows here in the 2v2 mid, but I keep saying that. I keep saying that, and no one does anything in the 2v2 mid. Here. SKT have so easy ways to set up ganks on caps. He is flash, no cleanse. Get that water, splash, Kiana, go for it, boom, kill. 
Keep snowballing fake at this game, 2-0, 3-0, prime in the mid lane, spread that pressure across the map. Boom, you're in the clear. And uh, all will be good. Varus Nautilus do have a fine matchup on bottom. Here, SKT's way to beat G2's composition is to get ahead early. The matchup on top is fine for Khan. He's gonna, he has boots and potion, bought a pink that he put on his own red buff, which is weird, I guess, but uh, this is how you prevent Olaf from screwing you over, is what G2 is thinking. They're going for a blue buff invade, but here G2 sweep this time and they're going. SKT is giving it up. And then here, if Jankos manages to defend this top side, it's going to be a wonderful situation for Jankos because Olaf... The beauty of Olaf is that his level 1 is so strong and his clear speed is so fast. So Olaf, when he manages to get an invade off, he's one of the few junglers that can clear his jungle fast enough to make it relevant. But you can see Clid is already going to the blue and uh, uh, no effort at all here from, uh, from um, G2 to try to defend this. They are just looking to divide the map and uh, pressure into bottom. So let's see now if G2 can actually make the wave uh, bottom push. Because now we have a map divide position and Vladimir Lee's impact onto Oriana, I mean Orn, is not that important. So G2, uh, even though Elise is taking their blue, they're happy because uh, the pressure points in this game is bottom side. Orn, top matchup. Teddy, no flash already, no flash. That's the E. I think perks... Oh! Why did he go away? X, whoa! Here, if Perks just keeps chasing, he didn't believe in Mickey. He didn't believe in Mickey. With the flash E, and then X, whoa! No TP for Varus. And I was just talking about how important it is that Varus and Nautilus get to play their lane. But here, the all in from G two was phenomenal. Exhaust all in, they had the guts to go for it, and uh, boom, Mickey's looking for that smackaroo on the turret. Maybe they could get a plating, but they're looking for his base, because Varus, Varus spawn time is very small. Mata's looking for some cancels, and, uh, you know, Wonder being pressured here, 1v2, doesn't seem to matter that much. Clid's now going for the gank, maybe they can get a kill, doesn't seem like it, they're not going for it, and uh, Wonder will have to take it in the bum for a bit, but he knows it's for a good cause. He's playing a tank. Yay! So fun. So fun to play tank. And then boom, we have a kill. Uh, you know, this should have been a 2v2 kill if Perks doesn't walk away and uh, Mickey communicates to him somehow or they know that he can do this and flash and go. Uh, could have been dangerous. Caps just playing his matchup, didn't TP back yet. He has two corrupting, three corrupting to two corrupting. Uh, both mid lane it seem uh, pretty, pretty okay. Boots have been bought for Yasuo. Versus Greaves is a crazy good item on Yasuo. Now let's see uh, G2 if they plan to invade uh, the spawns uh, on uh, the bottom side. Because you know, the, the funky thing is that Elise camps uh, spawn before Olaf camps spawn. Because Elise went buff to buff and now the Gromp will be the first one to spawn. Olaf is uh, gonna get spotted here, unless the pink ward spots the ward. Yeah, he's spotted, he's been seen in the river. Unless this pink ward just kills this ward. Maybe it does. Jankos puts a pink, and this 3v3 could get nasty. I, th I can imagine a world where it goes in both favors. The yeah, SKT uh, do in fact uh, have uh, summoners on Nautilus. And uh, G2 don't have any summoners. And Perks has the cocoon flying towards his face. It was quite uh, a funny timing to pause. Let's see if he wind walls. There he goes. Wind wall. Roadhouse. They just axed away for no fucking reason. I think they can keep the freeze. Elise will be forced to waste a lot of time. I guess they just thin out the wave. Because here with the cannon alone, they're going to keep a freeze. Orn now full build. To win this matchup, Jankos just starting the, the fucking Drake. He has double longsword, so why not? You know, it's Olaf. This is gonna be huge for the top lane matchup, Orn and mid. Uh, this is this is great. Wonder TPing. Wonder is in. Olaf is in trouble. Oh. 
Oh. Oh, oh, oh. SKT. With the motherfucking recovery, man. This is huge. Huge, huge, huge. And uh, G2 bit off a bit more than they can chew here. Syndra look to TP back with an item advantage. Item advantage and then bottom prio. Yeah, so Dragas is not on the spot. And then, you know, Kled just went into river to check. And then, boom. Yankos is on the dragon and Kled with a very good read here. Very, very good read. Wow. Khan also TP down. He kept his TP. He was in base, on our DTP top, and then... Wow. Whew. So yeah, G2 was just looking to push bot and uh, get the prio and then look for Drake with Syndra item advantage because she TP'd and uh, Faker had no TP. So he had sorcerer shoes against no item. And uh, Castle looked to push another wave and then base because he needs some items, uh, like mana items in his build. Then Wonder TP top and uh, Khan matched the TP on to bottom. He TP'd at the same time but went into bottom. And uh, SKT just read the fact that Jankos was going to for this Drake play. And uh, there is always some inherent risk with going uh, for Drake at 5 minutes because it's so strong. And especially in Ocean Drake, it's going to slow you. Olaf had no flash. And SKT just, just read. Read Jankos like a book there. Very, very wise. I've been in a situation where, you know, we, we've been, we, I've been on the receiving end of the team taking like a sneaky Drake or something like this very early on. And uh, the conclusion you always reach when you review is, well, we should have checked. <laughs> Nothing else. Mickey. Playing Gragas. He's comfortable. One of the best Gragas in the world. Since he's behind Khan because he TP'd into bottom, naturally. Or going for that freaking abyssal mask. Mickey getting cocoon, but he is away at the right time. Summoners are coming back up on bottom, and uh, SKT have managed to achieve that stalemate we know and love. But Olaf on level 6 is going to have quite the power swing here into these uh, champions here. Uh, Faker now with mobility boots. Let's see if we can get prior. Blue is going to be very important for Syndra because she has no mana item. Olaf is running into bottom. Faker walking into bottom as well. He has mobility boots on. SKT managed to get a lot here. Mata shot calling. Mata Mata. So, of course, if SKT come out of this early game with the leads, and uh, Kiana seems pretty unscathed at this point. Kiana scales pretty well, Vladimir scales pretty well. Um, should be uh, ways for them to, to win this game. They continue in the same fashion where they pressure through mid and to bottom to, to gain as many playthings as possible. But now all of a six, let's see if G2 can amp up the action a bit. Because I think any fights now that involve the junglers, Olaf is going to... Uh, win. Ooh, that's a flash. Yeah, here Perks should have ulted onto uh, Nautilus, but he didn't. He was aiming for Varus, and Varus flashed, and he should have ulted on Nautilus. Cloth armor on Varus is going for that Tabi Ninja, classic Varus item. Yankos might be in trouble, because even through the ult, he might get one shot at here. A lot of upfront burst damage here from Kiana. Same with the Lees. But uh, Jankos just relied on his teammates there and uh, waited. Oh, Wunder, maybe he can ult. No, Khan walking away. Kiana's hovering now. Kiana's coming, she wants to pick up a kill. Oh, Wunder can kill here, maybe. Ooh, okay. Okay, he did. Wunder had no ignite. He ignited before. 
I thought that if he ornhorned and he went, that he would kill, but he was backing off. Well, maybe I'm wrong. Like here. I'm meaning here. Like here if he goes. Because here one was sitting on Ignite. Like here he eased backwards. That's why it was confusing. And I think he probably could have done more. But then Kiana comes. And then he is looking for more. A bit too late. Khan baits him in. And uh, he dies. I've made a deal with the devil, Jimmy. She dies. Yeah, no stock of announcements. The BlizzCon was kind of strange. Maybe I just missed it. It's not like I was paying attention. SKT. Find the kill. Very positive people faker. Manages to find space to roam without any interaction from the jungle. Caps needs to respect though. Maybe uh, they're doing it through fake pressure. We don't know. They're not showing mid lane at all. So we can't really judge what's going on there. Also the fact that uh, the way... Syndra itemized in this game, puts her in a position where she doesn't have that mon much mana to push. No blue buff, no party. Clit now hovering bottom side, a lot of good tools here for SKT to force a fight. Mata has ultimate, Teddy has no flash. And Mata has ult, Teddy has ult, and then Elise can follow with Cocoon, and uh, we will see fireworks. SKT have a lot very strong ultimates, but G2 have very strong ultimates too. The Windwall can deny a lot. And uh, Caps is now hovering into bottom. Boom, Teddy! Look at that perks. This is how you play Yasuo good. When you you fucking EQR always if you can because the Q fucking lands and you get a stack. Yeah, baby. Look at that. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Look at that Olaf being all angry and shit. But um, perks ends up. In a tricky position here, even though he ults onto the Varus. Mickey gets his E on three people, gets out of range of Varus ultimate, backs off. Orn has no ultimate, neither does Khan. Faker is coming in now pretty late. Faker has no ultimate either. Khan with a stopwatch, everyone fucking survives. Khan has ultimate on now. No Orn horn, this is super good for SKT. Super good for SKT. So while I was praising Yasuo mechanics, I don't know if it was the best way to, to fight here, because Mata manages to dodge the Gragas ultimate together with his Q. So in a world where both get hit here and both are kind of flailing up in the air together with perks, then it would be a lot better. But instead, Mickey Mata gets to ult the Oyasu and he gets sees it down and he dies. And there, because everyone's in such a close proximity, the Windwall is not saving him from shit. The Windwall uh, didn't make any difference there in terms of how much he could survive. And then Orn here... Doesn't have CDR in his items, Khan does, and his ult is on and ready. And then Faker is coming through, and uh, G2 didn't manage to accomplish anything here with the with the man advantage. They practically went one for one. So this is already here, they are 5v4, and Faker is in the river right now, and G2 managed to only go one for one. So this is just an overforce. They tried to get Teddy, but uh, uh, at the price of perks, uh, getting killed, and the fact that Mata gets the Q onto Gragas is just such a game changer here because the Gragas ult is flying, and then he gets the Q, and then he doesn't get stuck in the ult, and Yasuo gets ulted here right away, and uh, uh, it could have been the difference maker here. It's also the fact that uh, you know G2 are unaware of SKT uh, jungle position. At least they don't know she's here, so they're going <laughs> thinking. That uh, Elise is uh, not here. So it's just a good read from SKT to prepare for this. And uh, Mata with his Q on Gragas probably was the difference maker here. And then uh, G2, I think they kind of overforced here. They flash E onto Khan and Caps has no mana now and no ult, no pressure at all. And SKT gets so, so much. Five to two kills, they're ahead. And uh, this dream composition that got me so hyped, if it's behind, then it's not going to matter. Because right now, Kiana and Vladimir are so fucking fed. So, so fed. As you can see, second Ocean Drake. Vladimir is going to continue to scale. Spellbinder, double CDR. Very classic. Classic Khan build. There's the Gragas ult. There's the one shot. 
and there's the root when wall doesn't do much here these two have Harold apparently they use some mids, mids are slow it's very difficult to, to break meta nowadays, there's so much wave clear. This matchup is going to become harder and harder for Wunder, especially if uh, the, the Vladimir is getting kills all over the place. I really like G2's draft, but this, uh, this situation here on bottom that they forced didn't work out. And uh, Kiana got a kill on top. And I think G2 had the right intention there with uh, with the... Uh, with dividing the map. The Varus being behind and all doesn't really matter if the others are ahead. Because still, I said in Champions Select I wouldn't want to be Varus this game. Uh, it still rings true. It still rings true. Sorry if the camera was uh, out of position for so long. It's uh, EU production, guys. EU production. I'm just gonna change something here where my wristband is. I'll change hand. Using a whoop to track my physical fitness. It's not that great right now. I'm pretty sick. As you all know by now, I've said it maybe a million times. Okay. SKT can look to delay this one. Can Mata become a hero? Right now, this play is gonna work. Caps is gonna die, no problem. Mm -hmm. So, SKT now, the way they contested Medley was quite pretty. Yeah, so an Olaf. Olaf gets pinged out on bottom, he's clearing a pink, and Caps walks up a bit too far. Caps needs a bit more support to be able to walk up like this, so he has an Olaf or something that can block the projectiles that are gonna come after the Nautilus results, but here Olaf was showing on both, Yas was showing on both, On was on top. And SKT find a very good play here. Nautilus uh, Mata is, is smurfing so far. He's finding a lot of creative plays, and this is something that was missing for SKT. Mata has been charging himself for so long. Du -du -du -du. Well, doesn't matter. Not that great of an old man that gets away with his Spider-Man abilities. 2,000 gold lead for SK Telecom and uh, Caps has to be a bit nervous in terms of how he walks up on mid lane. You begin to... The focus was so heavily on G2's tools here in their composition that you begin to forget what SKT have to bring to the table. And they have uh, some uh, mean ultimates that can cause a lot of damage in the form of Kiana, Nautilus, and Varus, and uh, Vladimir. They can find the, if they can find the right catches and start the fights in the right way, it's going to be quite wonderful for SK Telecom. Especially in a state game state like this when they're quite ahead and the right people have the money. It's okay that Varus is behind because still Varus is going to struggle to find uh, value in these team fights. Maybe he will now, considering how fed his teammates are and how much focus those players are going to take away from them. Here, Orn has no fucking armor. I think Faker could have maybe committed a bit onto the trade, because Orn has no armor at all. Mata is taking some punishment. I don't think an ultimate would be enough to kill him. But maybe Mickey could throw a barrel out or something to, to finish him off. Maybe it was a, worth a try. Baker hovering into mid now. Baker's been doing a lot of hovering this game, a lot of good roaming. I think uh, his Kiana is one of the best ones in the world. Faker, the last two games, has played uh, quite well. Except maybe the Rice team fight where they lost. Mata. Mata, Mata. Third Ocean Drake. They are swimming in ocean drakes. 
the region will be crazy. Oh, Faker can one-shot him, man. Jesus. Jesus. He found him. And delivered him from evil. Very nice here. Esquitia just maintaining mid prior, hovering in the bushes, maintaining pings, clearing wards, and uh, making it very hard for Syndra to walk up. I'm going to just attribute this. Oh! Mata! Mata! Jesus, Mata! Mata smurfing, man! So, SKT, the way they're controlling space this game has just been such a change of pace. They're controlling space, they're maintaining the, the, the river, they are making sure that Caps has a lot of blind spots, and when Syndra has blind spots, she can't really walk up, and a lot of great things are showing up here for SKT. They seem, they are proactive, they are proactive. And it's something that's been missing from SKT. And now Mata maybe is the one that activates everybody. And also here, Faker on Kiana is doing a lot of legwork, man. Faker and Mata, man. Faker and Mata. This is what we're talking about. This is what we want to see, man. Faker and Mata looking like uh, this is world champion form right here, man. Very, very nice game here. Faker pressuring the whole map, honestly, with his Moby boots. Mickey trying to walk in and Mata is like, Hey, you do not enter my dungeon. He's maintaining, holding the line here. But, um, yeah, you can only fake so much. <clears throat> G2 grouping up on mid lane. Maybe they can look for a dive here. I think SKT are playing a bit risky here. Kiana's showing up on bottom. Maybe they can look for a dive. Ornhorn, Ornhorn. Gragasult misses. Mickey whiffs it. Wunder walks back. He has W on. Mata survives with 1 HP. Khan... It gets Caps in trouble, but Caps has a wonderful ultimate here, and Faker's fighting the wrong people. Olaf can easily kill him. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Teddy can maybe finish some people off. Orn is super strong, though. Orn is super strong. There's a lot of magic resistance, and boom, Mickey. Mickey with the E that on leads to cancel the Q is very nice. Very nice. So here, I think SKT are quite crazy here with the way they're walking up on mid lane. That's not something they can do. Teddy uh, kept a good position, but he didn't do much damage. And sometimes maybe it's better to just die and do damage because your teammates are much stronger than you. Okay, okay, okay. So here I just felt like Faker was fighting the wrong targets. He's fighting the Olaf and uh, one v one he's going to lose against the Olaf. Faker is trying to do an ult over the wall, but here uh, Yankos just finds him. Faker gets finished off by that flash. Yankos dies eventually, boom, tries to get deeper, cleared into the position with his flash. Caps dodges that Q, very important one as well. Caps with the stopwatch or super clutch. Because if we take a step back here, Khan could have uh, for sure killed him here, but then uh, with uh, the CC chain here of Caps and Orn, they managed to finish him. Mata is in deep. Just, uh, just with the way the way the fight started, Kiana showing on bot in the start of the solo HP. I, w I thought they would just sound the Orn horn right here and then commit, but then we had the Gragas ultimate instead, where he I don't know what the fuck he was trying to do because Perks wasn't in range to ult anything. Uh, caps with the stopwatch, absolutely beautiful, and I think just uh, SKT playing a bit too far forward in the position with G2 want to fight. This was. Um, a good position here for G2, and G2 uh, survived with this level of health, so the fight was still rather close because um, of how much Vladimir managed to accomplish in terms of damage. Okay. Mid tower falls. Teddy looks to fish with some Qs, and G2 look to base. Nasher is on now, mountains are gonna begin to spawn, SKT have ocean, so Teddy is full HP, he doesn't give a shit, look how fast his mana is going, it's like a high speed internet downloading a little mp3 file. Okay. I rewind that tape, Mickey, I don't know what he smoked there, but uh, it didn't work, Faker fighting Olaf, Janko zoning him out is very good. Angles just needs to fight, but Mickey X is running into him. 
that's uh, the problem here. He tries to ult, so he wants to connect with caps here, but it's a bit off. You can see Olaf is almost practically one-shotting him. This is what I meant in Champion Select, that she just wants to pick Beefcakes against uh, Kiana, because she doesn't deal with targets that build a lot of armor that well, because she wants to itemize lethality, and she has a lot of upfront bursts, and um, not a lot of DPS. And then make you with that beautiful E, boom, wonder with another beautiful E to connect, and uh, G2 managed to win this fight. Mata, we have a uh, fade out, fade in, Mata death. Fantastic. <coughs> Vladimir is beginning to uh, gather strength. Stopwatch finish now on Syndra, which is quite a good buy. Good against Vlad, good against Kiana. I like it. This is the Ornhorn. This is a 4v5 fight right here. SKT have no flash on Khan. Khan enters the fight. It's a huge combination, but it doesn't matter because everyone on freaking G2 is so freaking tanky at this point in time. Perks with his wind wall and his shield and his HP and the only real target is the Syndra and that is why this composition is so fucking nuts. In mid game fights it's so hard to kill any target and the wind wall does a lot of work and Syndra can just uh, zone you. So it's, uh, this is the point in time where G2 is the strongest. No summoners on SKT and SKT just took a fight for no apparent reason. They just uh, were afraid of um, of Nasher, but they were spotting everyone. They were contesting the the bush and Mickey playing with his uh, with his life here. Mickey on Gragas is uh, confident. Mickey, we can clearly see that mountain is up. SKT is in position. Two people are hitting. G two. Mickey is a bit too low mana to contest this potentially. G two are looking to stop it. Gragas is going to walk down here, he has 40% CDR, it's a 45% even, he's trying to go for the classic, but this mountain means that G2 can take full control of the top side and uh, potentially get that top wave for free and give themselves some breathing room. Mountain is great while well, you have Nash's space, but without Nash's space a mountain is not going to do you much at all. Mountain is good when you're winning. Mountain is good when you are even and you have opportunities to fight Nash, but right now G2 is the one that controls all the spells. Mata is a bit far forward. Mata has to flash. Mata didn't get Ornhorn there. I think they could have Ornhorned. Khan is very strong. That's the Ornhorn. Mata has no flash. Mata is the target. Mata falls. A lot of damage here from Vladimir though. A lot of damage. Super much damage. The stopwatch was not enough to save our dear Syndra, but SK Telecom. We have to rewind that tape. Rewind that tape because let's take a look here. Everyone went so deep, and the Varus ultimate just fucking lands on everyone. And Zonia's off cooldown. Look at that. Zonia's off cooldown. So Syndra actually gets popped by this Vladimir. This Vladimir is monster fed. Right now, Vladimir has 400 AP. He activates Spellbinder, boom, 500, and then boom, you can see this E just fucking chunking caps and Mickey right at the same time. And then here Yasuo gets a kind of a tricky position because he's going for the finish here on Yasuo, on the, on the Nautilus, I mean, and uh, he manages to die. Khan gets the E in, and then boom, the Q lands on Yasuo, and Yasuo solo HP, and just the fact that Syndra has no freaking... She has no uh, stopwatch, is such a big difference maker here in the Varus ultimate and the Vladimir ultimate combo just hits everyone here. Jankos does a very good job of zoning Faker again, you can see his uh, chasing Faker off the screen. And that's uh, super super well done by Jankos, but it's just not enough because his team hard committed on the Nautilus and Varus and uh, Vladimir just got too much value. Did SKT do Nasher off of this? So they're gonna go. Olaf is alive, he has ult, he has smite, SKT has good damage onto this, Vladimir can tank and uh, sustain with his Q, Clearly also can tank with spiderlings and uh, Teddy with his Varos is uh, finding ways to be useful in a game that is very difficult to be useful in. We have to give him props for that, boom, it's finished, and there's another kill, Caps is trying to come in but way too late. We have another TP, one has another TP, but 10 seconds spawn, this is going to be a dead caps, most likely has no flash, he finds one kill, Mata fucks it up, Faker goes, stopwatch, caps, 
tries to get more, but it's not possible. Beautiful fight from SKT there. They were a bit too too horny there to, to kill Mata. You see Mata has no flash, he's baiting forward. Faker is on the flank and then boom, the Nautilus is on the landing. Nautilus is already out of the fight, but then the Varus ultimate, you see the plague. It's spreading onto four people right now and Perks is ulting to get out of Varus ult range. But Perks here doesn't do too much and Vladimir is getting so much value, man. Vladimir is, is the counter. To this team composition Vladimir is the best pick into this team composition when you have a team composition with big ultimates a lot of burst a lot of tanks Vladimir is is perfect for that he's very happy to play Vladimir here that's why I was considering do you need to do you need to ban Jax if you're planning to go for the Orn Olaf the rotation there I think Vladimir is just ideal pick here ideal best pick and Khan is delivering he has a very aggressive build that scales super well into the game. Faker is in trouble now. Maybe he can run away. He has Moby Boots, Orn Horn. Faker dodges it. He runs, he runs, he runs. Stun lands and boom. Balls to the face. SKT lose a bit of their Nash timer. This has been a trend for SKT where they have Nash and they managed to get caught somewhere. I don't know how this happened because we had a replay into replay. But all in all, we know that Faker got caught and it's not necessary because SKT have Nash and they can play cool. Stopwatch here on Teddy is going to be, be a deal. Be, it's another one of those tools that is so good into a composition that is full with tanks and uh, with a lot of strong ultimates. That so much is going to be massive. Uh, we have to see now if Teddy is going to go for Witsend or whatever he's going to do. It is crazy how Teddy has managed to find himself being useful in this game. Varus ultimate whiffs and the spider cocoon also gets dodged. Let's see now if Cinderella is going to buy Banshee because honestly I don't think she can. I think she needs to buy more damage. I don't think Banshee would be the way here because sure Banshee is strong against some of the ultimates that are on the enemy team but you committed to Zonia's already. Zonia is your defensive item. You need to uh, build more aggressively I feel. Right now SKT is super happy in this state. 5k gold ahead. Vladimir is monster fed. Vladimir can 1v9. Vladimir can easily 1v9. Cannons are doing a lot of fucking work on bottom. This this is Cannon Briggs right here. Shouting, let's go champ. I don't know if people will get this reference, but... Turrets are slowly falling. Khan doesn't have flash off for the next fight. That can be a difference maker. Khan no pull. Oh, Mickey missed times, but I think it would have been a disaster if he went anyway. Faker's gonna push the ass onto the wall and he's gonna get one shot. So, yeah, maybe better that he missed. Mata is still a bit deep here, but they managed to CC Wunder at the time, so he couldn't sound the Orn Horn. Wunder is pretty deep. Teddy has targets to hit, and boom, the Vladimir goes dynamite. But this fight looks kind of good for G2 because Orn is dead. But now Teddy can show up. The flash, the aggressive flash. Oof. Yankos hits the axe. I don't even know what Yankos has bought, so I don't know if he can run after this. Does he have MR? I don't know Yankos' build. Oh, he's pretty... he has MR. Okay. So Mata cancels Wonder from using the ult with his own ult. Then Mata dies here to what looks like an Orn Ignite. And then Khan is coming in from a flank and Mickey E's him. Stops him from entering, gives Mickey... Gives Mickey the... The Aftershock, but here Faker just gets fucking blown up like... What happened to Faker here? He just disappeared from the planet, man. <laughs> it just... It's disappeared from Earth. Look at this. Look at Faker. It just disappears, man. Khan managed to get some damage off, but he didn't get the full combo of on caps. And then Teddy is going for the flash of the century, but there's a stopwatch waiting there. It was a bit too fancy here for, for Teddy. So 
So Fekka has been struggling in these team fights, honestly. Hasn't been too valuable on the Kiana. He's roamed and pressured a lot, but in the team fights, Jankos was covering him, and in this one, he was not playing that great, honestly. Uh, it's hard to fight with Kiana around the inhibitor space. I can give him that. But um, he just got snapped in half by very little effort. By spells that were pointed at Vladimir, you know. He could have not been there and and, and Sindra would have used his, her spells the same way. Let's see now what... Um, What Caps buys now? One more tank item maybe? Yeah, Sindra is a tank, I tell you. 50% CDR tank. Yeah, so three items, which is pretty huge. Stopwatch sit on Teddy. Khan has flash now, it's gonna be a, a bit of a change for this next team fight. Mars is getting caught. Not that good, obviously. Doesn't take a genius. But uh, it seems like he's always surviving with very low HP and then getting away. And this time around, G2 didn't overcommit on Mata. So that's positive. SKT now no pull on Vlad. And uh, Orn is building items for his teammates. He's building now the Yasuo IE. IE finished now. Boom. You can see the animation there at the bottom half of the screen. Orn all soon on cooldown. Mata no flash. As G2, you could see clearly the adaptation there in the fight was they could potentially kill Malta but put themselves in a bad position, but they're taking it slow. It's a much better approach. Much, much better. Mickey, 40% CDR, Gragas would soon on, or level 16, would soon also still on. Or soon on, is what I'm trying to say. Vladimir is still monster fed and he can be the difference maker, but right now Cinder is a tank. And if uh, Yasuo doesn't interact, ooh, okay, okay. You can see there the wind wall. I don't know how it interacts exactly with uh, a supreme display of skill, but I think Faker is just um, too close to him for the wind wall to to do anything. So Parks gets knocked into the wall, but he has uh, the Starax gauge. Janko is very low HP. We didn't see this happening. Right now, Faker is super low. He gets blown up. Vega just gets clapped in half. Here's the Orn Horn. Orn Horn. Okay. Windwall. Clid is in trouble. Perks is okay. And that's a Nash. That's a Nasher. Huh? I'm not in the mood. I don't want to eat sour things, Elena. My stomach hurts. Thank you. Okay. So it started off with Yasuo getting caught a little bit and all our fighting, losing HP, and then all the G2 ultimates started to come off cooldown and here, uh, so, so Perks is a bit too deep here, I don't like this movement here, it could have been dangerous, I think here if, yeah, Nautilus had no ult, supreme display of skill and the wind wall still saves him somehow because Clit cannot connect with an E, neither can Matt connect with the Q. So Khan com comes in for the all in here, but he only catches Yankos and he has a spirit visage. So he survives it no problem. Vladimir has no combo now, and uh, behind the back here, he got ulted and he's very low HP, and he gets E'd in the forehead again. Boom. And then now Faker is in the mix, but he's so low HP and he gets clapped in half. I don't know why Faker's in the mix here. He's trying to clear some mods with his Duskblade of Draktar, but he's just getting smacked in half. And then the stun there on Vladimir is clutch. Varus is not in a position to fight. Neither is Perks, but it doesn't matter because Faker was just too deep. So Faker is having a very hard time of, of fighting here on Kiana. Holy. He's, he's a rap god. This is one of the funkiest fucking Syndra builds I've ever seen in my life. He's buying Oblivion Orb fourth. He's getting Morello, I guess. <laughs> for the healing reduction <laughs> of Teddy and... Shaka Khan. But uh, G2 are in a great state now to win. As long as they can survive the Vladimir burst, then all is good. I think this is the mindset of Caps' build. Survive Vladimir and I will I'll be good. All my teammates, they can survive Vladimir on their own. I just need to have the items to survive Vladimir. And it's working. It's working, honestly. 
the damage is, is there. The damage is enough because SKT is not that beefy. So even Orn is having good damage output. Olaf is having good damage output. Everyone has good damage output here as long as they survive that initial big burst from SK Telecom. So it's a very interesting adaptation here from, from Caps. I just got it into my mind that uh, it was uh, it was silly that uh, the G2 were... Uh, I mean, Caps was just building tank on Rise, and I just don't like it. I think it was a mistake. Wonder has 4.5k HP. He's a Tonk. Said he is getting a chain vest. Not gonna save him from shit. Playing AD carry. Sucks this game. G2 can commit into bottom as long as Perks is fine here. All is good. Ooh, okay. This time around, he denied Faker's ultimate here. You could see it. Boom. He went well at the right time, and Perks is trying to survive. He stopped watching. Let's see what he can do. Nothing he can do. Uh, one for one, but it gives SKT breathing room here. Uh, I mean, one for one for a inhibitor. And uh, SKT is very happy here because the Baron push is going to stop. And uh, uncharacteristic six from Perk. Perk is pushing at the wrong time, getting caught in mid lane. I think he just doesn't need to walk up and Faker finding a good angle. Even though Perks uh, windwalled very well here, uh, it just wasn't enough. And SKT now completely forgotten on my part is that they have two open inhibs. So this could be uh, their way in here if uh, Perks is dead. They're going for the Ornhorn. Horn. These two are looking to fight. Oh, Teddy getting stunned up. Need to remind themselves that G2 can't push too hard here on the fight. They can't push the go bot into her, but they've done enough to scare SKT away. Faker doesn't have an ultimate. Khan has ultimate and flash. Clid is getting caught. Axed and Khan is getting in there. Caps stopwatch, right time. E damage has been avoided. Wunder kills Clid. And then big stun from Caps. Jankos is trying to do some damage, but Khan is just too strong at this point in time. And also Perk spawned in all of this. Okay, okay, okay. Let's take a look at this. Let's take a look at this slowly. Perks is spawning in three seconds. That's the information we have. Clid getting caught. Faker no ultimate. Faker no ultimate at all. And uh, here you can see that Wunder is too tanky. He finishes off Clid. He's just staying in the mix. Teddy's is trying to punch him. Slowly, slowly Wunder is going down, but Wunder is just buying time. That is his job here. You can see here Orn and Lag like, Olaf and Syndra don't have enough damage to kill the Vladimir. Yankos flashes away and they get away and Zonia uh, saved the life of Capster. And possibly them more as well. And then Perks comes in from the back. How does he where does he come from? He's like a fucking little ninja here. Boom, ult, and then he takes the plant. He saves his brother. Stopwatch. Windwall could have been placed better to save Wunder. And then Perks. He is in there. Boom. Holy quadra kill, and it's also the ending. G2, 3 1. Only. And to gather my thoughts here. Hmm. G two three one. G two versus FPX in the finals. Uh, the Orn blind pick was wonderful. I liked it. Vladimir could have potentially been a ban because if you're planning to ban blind pick Orn, I don't think uh, Jax is, is useful. Like Jax, if, if they had Jax in this composition, it would have been so doomed. G2 made a lot of blunders this game, but they got away with them because SKT also blundered plenty. It was uh, it's 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 weird because both of these semifinals were riddled with mistakes. And maybe this is the era of League of Legends we're in, uh, where teams are trying to play on edge and uh, many mistakes happen. Because macro-wise, there was 
There was a lot of mistakes from both sides. And then always it came down to uh, the late game uh, Baron fights. So yesterday it looked uh, a tad bit worse because they were a lot of, there were a lot of individual mistakes. I think that's the biggest difference here. I feel like SKT and G2 this series were more about decision-making mistakes, choices of where you, where you fight, choices of where you push. And I think G2 was just a tad bit sharper in terms of decision-making. I felt like always when G2, uh, when G2 played to their level, I felt like SKT had very little to offer, but the moment G2 slipped up, SKT always responded with heavy punches. I think Game 2 was a great example of G2 making a lot of mistakes uh, that SKT punished, because SKT always struggled to find ways to pressure. This game, I felt like they were finally doing something in terms of getting mid-prio, finding angles, and understanding that uh, Caps can't really walk up on mid-wave, and then using their prio to find catches in the jungle, so it worked. They caught Yasuo ones. They caught caps were uh, once. They were like two and eight in kills, and SKT started to look active. But then afterwards, it was all about those team fights, and uh, the team fights were going a bit more in G2's favor. But it was always interesting because G2 was always the ones choosing the fights, and honestly, Yankos completely was in the mind of Faker. Faker on Kiana after the early game was just not useful. And uh, it's tough to play Kiana against this composition. We have to accept that there's a lot of tanks on this team and tanks are the counter to Kiana because they can beat, <laughs> beat Kiana in 1v1 because she has no sustenance. Or, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's just that uh, she wants to buy lethality. You can even see here in the end game screen, she just has lethality, but everyone on the enemy team has so much armor except Yasuo. So much armor on this team, and everyone's a tank. There's a aftershock Gragas and uh, G2 make it to the finals. That's exciting. That's uh, super super cool. Uh, obviously, I'm super super sick, and I was not too happy with uh, with the the level of analysis because I I felt like I lost my mind sometimes. I'm gonna rest up now. Be happy. Excited for FPX versus G2. Gonna be a high final. Happy China's in the final, and uh, G2. Uh, Make one of my predictions correct, at least. 3-1 uh, uh, G2 versus SKT. SKT really didn't impress me, this tournament. I was not impressed by SKT. And um, this semi-finals continued in the same vein. They have a very specific way of playing the game, and they have a hard time breaking that mold, while G2 are always breaking that mold. <laughs> They're always finding new creative ways of brute forcing and taking what belongs to them. Even in this situation, just leading up to this final fight. You know, this, this in a lot of cases makes me fucking nervous. You know, they, they are... Yas was dead, he spawns in 20 seconds, enemy is pushing down, and they're fucking engaging. They're engaging, forcing a flash off of Mata, and SKT don't know what to do. Ofek is running around like a headless chicken, you can see him here. Chicken, chicken, bark, 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 bark. He clears the ward with the dusk blade, and G2 uh, are continuing to fight. This made me fucking nervous. I was like, they are maniacs. Here is a position where Teddy might actually get value, but Khan and SKT are a bit, uh, a bit scattered here. They're a bit scattered. They need to. They want to look to turn. Uh, Wonder is fighting away. Khan is fighting against two people, and then. You know, uh, they managed to stall out this fight long enough. Wunder is fighting Teddy. You see him, you know, fighting as much as possible. And G2, Yangos, and Caps managed to get away from the Vladimir. So the Vladimir used all his power to push two people out of the fight, but then Perks appears. And having the vision to be able to take such a fight, Jesus. This is why, why I think G2 ends up looking a lot better than a lot of other teams because of situations like this. But they are seeing, seeing the world where they can win a fight like this. For me, even as a spectator, shocking. You know, 4v5, okay, Kiana has no ultimate. They're trying to scare them off, use some ultimates, maybe find some picks here if they can one-shot someone. And then they continue. And uh, SKT uh, definitely were outmatched. 
Uh, by no shape or form is, is, is G2 perfect. I just feel like at the higher end of situations, they are, uh, most of the time uh, come out ahead. They make a lot of mistakes, but uh, the, the level of decision-making they have in some particular moments is just too fucking good. Too fucking good. The decision to push down mid lane in the previous game, the decision to take a second tower on bottom, and use their tempo to force a reaction out of SKT. SKT didn't know how to handle that. I wouldn't know how to handle that. And uh, G2 is looking like a tournament winner. Tournament winner G2, man. They're going for the full fucking... The full fiesta. The full fucking... Run. All the way to the World Championship title. I think they look uh, like a team that could be favored against FPX. I think uh, G2 is a team that is equipped to attack someone like Dunvi because they actually have team play and good mechanical players. In the series between IG and FPX, I think uh, uh, IG were given a lot of chances to do something, to contest, but IG is just not a team. They don't play as a team at all at any point in the game and uh, the finals will be super exciting. We'll do some preview video and then um, we will see. Wow. G2-3-1. Uh, I predicted it but it's still quite exciting on so many levels. G2-1 Elena. Elena? G2-1. They're in the finals. They beat SKT. <laughs> Crazy. They shit on Faker. <laughs> Holy. Pretty impressive. Yeah, this is the second time they beat SKT this year. Because they won MSI, you know? Yeah. And now they are playing the World Finals. It's fucking crazy, man. That is... That is nuts, man. They won everything. Wow, what a team. It's going to be fun to play against them in, in the uh, CS, man. LEC, whatever you want to call it. You watch all of these videos and you watch till the end. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for bearing with me with my voice. I will uh, rest up now. I uh, appreciate all your positive comments. I appreciate you guys wishing me to, to get healthy. But this is... This is passion right here. This is semi-final, so this is not work for me. And I'm just enjoying myself. And I'm happy that people can enjoy this with me. Because um, it's fun. Yeah? The series was great. To summarize, I just think SKT... You know, their level of proactivity definitely leveled up here. The only game that G2 lost was when their moves were ending up to be shit. When they were TPing on bottom at the wrong times, pushing bottom on the wrong time, Caps getting caught, uh, Wonder getting caught, uh, them taking bad fights where, um, you know, SKT could punish. And uh, it's always, always feels like that when it comes to G2, that they all the power is in their hands. That's why T2 is so freaking impressive, because it's always the powers in their hands. They clean up their draft, they clean up their play, and then their brilliance shows through. In an opportunity like this, you know, imagine. It's just so fucking nuts that uh, in a position like this, that they recognize that they can freaking fight. It's so insane. It's so insane. This is really, really... Next level, man. Really, really insane. And then it just plays out beautifully. It plays out beautifully. Really, really insane. Look at Yasuo's timing. It's just perfect. Dito is just kiting enough, and then Wunder is fighting, and then it just all works. It all works. Janko flashes out at the right time, and then boom. Here comes the dynamite. Boom. I hate the look of his smug grin. Boom. Perks. Slicing everyone in half. Wow. Okay, well that's enough. I've been saying goodbye for a long time, summarizing for a long time. All the best to you. Peace.